Good morning again guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at some algebra in review. This is just recapping what we did last term, just to keep algebra at the top of our mind because we need to make sure that this year that we are perfect with our algebra. So, what will we be doing today? We're gonna to be looking at um, adding and subtracting like terms. Okay, that was really important from last term that we did those things. So adding and subtracting like terms, so things like um, 3a plus 2a is equal to 5a, okay? We're gonna be looking at um, some multiplying and dividing, e.g. things like um, 2a times 3y. If you remember, that would be two times three is six, and a, times y would be a y. If he says something like 2a times 3a, can you remember what would happen when I times the a's together? We'd still get the 6, but that's right, we'd get a squared. Um, we're going to be looking at a little bit of substitution, revising that as well. Um, for example, if a equals 2, find 3a plus 1. So for example, we're doing three times two, which is six, and six plus one equals seven. Um, we're looking at just some basic, I guess, fractions as well. So things like um, a over three times a over four, which if we multiply fractions, we times the tops to make a squared, and we times the bottoms to make 12, and that would be my final answer. We're also gonna be looking at some expanding brackets as well. So there's a fair bit in today's lesson um, that we're revising. Um, I guess the example of this one would be things like five outside of a plus two, remembering that when we got a number at the front, we times what's inside by that number. So five times a is five a, and five times two makes 10. So these are the five things that we'll be revising in this video. Then you'll be taking that information and having a crack at the 2014 past paper. That was the yearly paper, and um, that was two years ago. Okay, so remember to write these examples down. It's a good idea to pause the video and then have a crack at the questions and then press play to see how you went, making sure that you write the right answer down if you didn't get it correct. Okay, so the first one, let's look at this. We're simplifying. So this is adding and subtracting what we call like terms. So remembering like terms are where the letters are the same. And if I look at all of these four terms, we'll notice that all of them have an A on them, which makes all of them like terms, which is fantastic. It means that we can add or subtract them all together. Also notice when I'm looking at these questions, I'm putting my circles in, we're making sure that the sign in front of it belongs with it. Okay, there actually is a plus in front of the 5A. Eh? Okay, it does exist there, but we just don't often um, sort of say it. So five plus six is 11. 11 minus three is eight, and eight plus two equals 10. So I'm left with the answer of 10A. Okay, what about the next one? This one's a bit more challenging. We do have x's there, don't we? We've got a 5x squared. Now, in order for us to add or subtract, the letter must be identical. Now, in this case, we have two different letters. We have an x squared, but we also have just x's. And those two terms are different which means that if I've got 5x squared, I've also got a minus x squared. If I look at the plus 2x, I'm gonna lose a little rectangle, we've got the plus 3x. So those are my like terms. So let's have a crack at those ones now. We've got 5x squared minus 1x squared. Well, five take away one equals four x squared. And then I've got plus 2x plus 3x, well, two plus three makes five, so we've got plus five x. So my final answer is four x squared plus five x. Okay, we can't add them because one's an x squared and one's an x. They're not like terms. Okay, the last one here, we've got three a y 
Now look here, I've got a two. There's no AY in that one, so that's definitely not like terms. But then I've got this 2YA. Now are they like terms? Well, let's think about this, right? This is separated by a times, right? And this is separated by a times. But it doesn't really matter which way you multiply things. For example, if we said, what's 2 times 3? Well, the answer is 6. What's 3 times 2? Well, the answer is still 6. So in fact, 2YA could be written as 2AY, which means that these two terms, they didn't look exactly the same. They actually are the same. Okay, So in this case, 3AY plus 2ya, that equals 5ay's, and then I've got plus 2 at the end of it, which I can't do a whole lot with. Alrighty, so that's my first bit of adding, subtracting like terms. I then come through to example 2, where we're multiplying or dividing. Okay, now these ones, they don't need to be like terms. Alright, so in this case, what we've actually got here is 5 times a, times 3, and if we think of it that way, we can actually rearrange it to say, well, what's 5 times 3? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and I've just got times a there, which I can put it like that. Please don't write it as 15 times a. It's not simplified, okay? We must simplify it as having 15a. All right, the next one. Now, likewise, 2 times, 2a means 2 times a, times 3 times a. Once again, I'm just doing that so you can see that I can simply times the numbers together. 2 times 3 makes 6. And then a times a, well, a times a is a squared. So we get 6a squared. What about the next one? 6 times 3 equals 18. m times m is m squared and I've just got a times n at the end that's my answer 18 m squared n and the very last one we've got 20 divided by 10 well 20 divided by 10 equals 2 I've got an m well I'll just put the m there and we're sorted alrighty so that was simplifying multiplying and dividing like terms Example three brings a little bit more challenging and it brings us back to our fraction laws. Okay, you need to remember what we used to do with fractions. For example, if I had a half times, let's say, a fifth, what we did in order to multiply fractions, we simply multiplied the top two numbers, which in this case would be one, and then we multiplied the bottom numbers. Two times five was ten. Therefore, that answer would be one tenth. Now, if I was dividing fractions like this, well, we actually don't like dividing fractions. So if you can remember what we used to do there, we used to turn the divide into a times, and we would do what we would call a times and tip. We would tip the second fraction like that. And because now what I've done, I've now put it so I've got timeses. So I can times the tops, 1 times 5 is 5, and I can times the bottoms, 2 times 1 is 2, and my answer is 5 on 2. So let's apply that now to these harder questions for our algebra. Okay, now these are timeses, so we can simply times the top numbers together. 5 times 3 is 15, m times n, well they're not the same, so it's just mn all over, 2 times 4 is 8, and I've got m there. Now, that is the right answer, but what you might recognize is that you actually have an m on top and an m on the bottom, which means that if you divide those, they actually disappear. And what I'm actually left with is 15n all over 8, and that is my final answer. All right, that's a pretty tough question. The next one's even more challenging. These are really hard question, guys. So I don't expect you all to get these. Um, just like I showed you in the example above, this is a dividing question, which we don't like dividing with fractions. So what we do, we turn the fraction to a times, and we can flip like that. Now I've got 5 times 3 is 15, 
m times m, well, we can write that as m squared, and 6 times 1 is 6. At the moment, I'd be pretty happy. If you could get that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. But what you might notice is that you can actually simplify 15 divided by 6 because 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 15 five times. So you could come actually come out with 5m squared on 2. But as I said, if you got 15m squared on 6, I'd be ecstatic at this point. All right, because that's a pretty tough question. But again, that's a really hard part, and that's for your top level questions. Um, if you're not sure of that, that's okay, but still write it down so you've got it in your books. And then we're nearly done. We've got two more questions to go. This one, hopefully we remember. Um, this is where you have the number out the front of the brackets. So this means we're doing, we're timesing whatever's inside the brackets by what's out the front. So 5 times m is 5m. I've got a plus sign there. And 5 times 2 makes 10. And that's simply it. I can't do anything about it. I can't add them because one's got an m and that doesn't. They're not like terms. Okay, what about the next one? This is a hard one. 3m times 2m. Well, 3 times 2 makes 6, and m times m, well, that would be m squared. Notice there's a minus there. I'm going to put a minus. 3m times 5. 3 fives are 15, and I've got the m there. And again, they're not like terms, so we can't subtract them. Alrighty, they're a bit more challenging. Um, the next ones you might remember as what we used to call this as substitution. Alright, substitution. So my substitution means that we replace the, le the letter with a number. So 5a means 5 times a, and we know that a equals 2, minus, well 2c minus, means 2 times c, so 2 times 3. So what this actually means, and you actually can put it in the calculus straight away, but it means 10 take away 6, which just equals 4. All right, so the substitution, we hopefully should remember that. And we're coming to our last questions here, guys. Now, this is the stuff that you're really good at with Mr. Munro um, and myself looking at our, our um, solving equations. All right, this was an equation that we had to solve. Alrighty, so my equation that I had to solve, we've got the 5a plus 3. Now, which of these was most by itself? You might remember the 3 was. So if I take away 3 from both sides, and then I'd clean it up, and I'd say, okay, I'm going to rewrite it. We have 5a, because 3 take away 3 is 0. 13 minus 3 equals 10. And then I've got a times in between the 5 and the a. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Divide both sides by 5. I'm left with a is equal to well, 10 divided by 5 equals 2. And look at that. We've got my solution. Alrighty. Um, the next one. I've got a 2 and I've got a negative 1. Which of those am I allowed to get rid of first? Well, you might notice that the minus 1 is most by itself. So if I plus 1 to both sides, 1 minus 1 equals 0, that crosses out. We're left with 2a on the left-hand side is equal to 6. Then we've got the times 3 at the front, so times 2, 2 times a. So we're going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of that. And then I'm left with a is equal to 6 divided by 2 equals 3. We've got our answer. And the very, very last one, which is a little bit more challenging again, I've included a bit of expanding the brackets first. 2 times q is 2q, plus 2 times 2 is 4, that equals 18. Now it's like the above two questions. I've got a plus 4, so we want to minus 4 from each side. So I'm left now with 2q equals 14. The last step there is we've got times 2. We want to divide both sides by 2. So we're left with q equals, well, 14 divided by 2 equals 7. And then we've got our answers there. Okay, guys, that is a massive amount to throw at you. I do apologize, but again, that's all revision. It's all stuff that we did last term. We need to make sure that we write all of those questions down with the working, and now we use that information to help us when we're doing that 2014 paper. 
that's really good revision. That's the type of things that we need to do when we're revising at home. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, guys. Have a great afternoon.